Hello, this is Mr. McGovern. This is the last video in the rotational motion series about new concepts. I'll do one more after this um, and I'll go through an exam question on rotational motion. This is a very short little video about the angular momentum of a particle. This type of question only comes up once every three or four years. Um, but if you're a student who's aiming for high merits excellences, this is something that you need to know. So in the diagram to the right we have a bullet travelling in a straight line. It strikes a disc on its edge and that causes the disc to start spinning. Now we just learned in, in video 9 that the total angular momentum in a system is conserved. That means the total angular momentum before and after the collision is equal. On the right, the whole system is spinning. Okay, so as the system has momentum, angular momentum after the collision, it must have had angular momentum before the collision. But the disc is not spinning before the collision, so where's the angular momentum? The bullet has the angular momentum, even though it's travelling in a straight line. So there is a formula for things that are particles that travel in a straight line that end up attaching themselves to something and causing it to spin. And that is L for angular momentum, is the mass times the velocity times the radius that it hits at. This calculates that angular momentum. So we've got a bullet here, let's say we had its mass, its m, its velocity, 500 meters per second, and r is the radius from um, the center of rotation to where it strikes. So that's it, short little video. This can work in, in reverse as well. We could have something spinning to start with and then it flings off a particle and it slows down because of that. Um, and that particle has some of the, has carried some of the angular momentum with it out of the system.